Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas and this is the first in a three-part series on how to use Final Cut Pro for creators. So I've been pretty regularly making videos ever since I got my first DSLR camera, which was about five years ago. And when I first started making videos, the first question that I started asking was, what tool should I use to edit these videos? So what I ended up using to start with was an app that's available for free on just about every Mac, and that is iMovie. iMovie is a great, simple piece of software that makes it pretty easy for you to cut up and splice footage and uh, drop in audio, as well as doing some really basic titling. However, what I discovered as I was using iMovie is that it is extremely limited, particularly when you start reaching the phase where you want to start stacking multiple types of footage or graphics on top of each other, or if you want to start entering the idea of having two camera angles as I do in all of my videos. So this led me on the hunt to find the perfect piece of software to use. The two that I saw coming up over and over again was Final Cut Pro as well as Adobe Premiere. And both are great pieces of software and I did work with both to start with. So I did some experimenting with Adobe Premiere and many people, particularly video editors and producers, continue to recommend Adobe Premiere as well as I did when I first started. But one of the problems I found with Adobe Premiere, particularly early on, was that it is super complex. It is a pretty big learning curve if you've never worked with an Adobe Premiere-like piece of software. So if you've never worked with After Effects or if you've never worked with a number of Adobe products out there, it might be difficult for you to pick up and learn that. What I discovered with Final Cut Pro, however, was that it did have some complexity, but I found myself picking up those complexities relatively quickly because it was very similar in many ways to iMovie. And beyond just being similar to iMovie, I just found the user interface of the whole application much more easy to use. Now, this video series is not about which is better, Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. It just so happened in my case that I decided to settle on Final Cut Pro. So the first question to answer is who is this video series for? And I touched on it in my intro, which is that it's for creators. So maybe you want to, or you currently have a YouTube channel, or maybe you create TikTok videos, or maybe you're pretty prolific on Instagram. Whatever the case, I'm going to assume that your goal isn't to become a professional video editor. In instead, what you're looking for is just a simple solution to make it a lot easier for you to manage the footage that you're working with. Again, whether it's for social media, whether it's for your YouTube videos, or even just your personal side projects. With that in mind, one of the things that you need to consider, and that I had to consider very early on as I started using Final Cut Pro, is that Final Cut Pro, as the name suggests, is a professional piece of software, which means that it has a ton of features packed into it. However, as a creator, and this is something that I discovered very early on, is that it's very possible that you don't want or even need to be able to use a lot of what Final Cut Pro offers you. You just want to take advantage of those few niche uses and features so that it makes it easier for you to create those TikTok videos or for that YouTube video, which is 90% of what I do is just YouTube videos. So you'll find a lot of courses out there, either paid or free or on YouTube or wherever, that are going to try and teach you everything about Final Cut Pro. And it's very easy to become overwhelmed relatively quickly when, again, you're like me and all you're really trying to do is do some basic editing, maybe some multiple camera angles, maybe an animated title here and there, and just really trying to keep it simple. So in essence, what I'm creating with this video series is a video series that I myself would have liked when I first started learning Final Cut Pro. What I'm going to do throughout the course of this series is that I'm just going to show you the essentials. I'm going to show you the things that have been most useful to me as a creator, as I've been creating for YouTube, as I've started doing things on TikTok, as I did things in Instagram in the past. Just the fundamentals, just enough to kind of get your feet wet so that you can either explore A, whether or not you want to use Final Cut Pro, or B, if you do want to use Final Cut Pro, the fundamentals that you need to get up and running quickly. Now, before I move on, one of the things I will mention, and one of the reasons I decided to use Final Cut Pro, 
And spoiler alert, if you didn't already know this Final Cut Pro unfortunately only works on a Mac so that if you're using a PC, it's not gonna be an option for you. However, we do see that a lot more creators these days are, are specifically working on a Mac, particularly with all the M1 silicon chips that are coming out in all of uh, Apple's new devices. In fact, that's what I work on right now is an, uh, an M1 Mac mini, is that we're finding that Final Cut Pro is optimized for those M1 chips, enabling you to work much quicker, export way faster, and in the end, produce more video. Okay, so in this first video, what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be opening up Final Cut Pro here in just a couple of moments, and I'm just gonna be giving you a brief overview of the interface. We're not actually gonna start editing anything, we're just going to start up a new library, create a new event, create a new project, and just kind of show you some of the basics of the interface itself. In the next video, we're actually going to start and create a a sample project where we'll drag in footage, we'll drag in audio, we'll actually start editing it on the timeline. And then on the final video, the third video of this series, we're gonna walk through the process of adding a number of effects as well as doing post-processing and then eventually exporting and publishing your final video. Okay, so one of the things that I wanna mention just before we pop into Final Cut Pro is that you may notice that as you open your own version of Final Cut Pro that you probably have a newer version than I do because I'm filming this at a fixed moment in time and Final Cut Pro will continue to release updates. You might also notice that I have some plugins or add-ons that you might not have. Just ignore those for now. Now what I'm going to be doing again in this series is just covering the fundamentals. However, you wanna make sure that you subscribe if you're not already because I'm gonna be doing future videos about Final Cut Pro in the future that are going to be covering specific plugins and add-ons and animations and titles that I use that make life a lot easier and they're not, they're very simple and easy to use. So just a quick note, uh, without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump into Final Cut Pro, start to kick the tires and get familiarized with the interface itself. Okay, before we even get started with working within Final Cut Pro, I've got Final Cut Pro open. One of the things that's gonna be really important is ensuring that you have a good organized file structure that you have for every single project that you work on. Now, one of the things that I've created is actually an automator workflow that actually goes through and creates for me a structured collection of folders that I can then reuse over and over again. And then I just use this simple, sorry, I use this simple nomenclature. So I give an independent unique ID to every folder that I can use to identify a project over and over again. I click okay and I give it a name. Click okay, I add any notes, spotlight comments in case you need to reuse those. And then I click continue. And so then what happens is on my desktop, this automator workflow creates this little folder for me that has room for assets, has my uh, spot for my audio files, any documents that are related to the project, the final exported files that go along with that, the footage. So I've got that categorized by B-roll, uh, first camera, second camera, and any screen capture. Now what I am gonna do for you is I'm going to make this automator workflow available for you for free if you are one of my thomasmcgee.tv subscribers. And again, that is free. So just head on over to thomasmcgee.tv and I will actually have a link for you to download that automator workflow. So you can open it up in an automator and just have it, just like I just did, automatically create folders for you on the fly. It's absolutely free. So head on over if you would like to get it. I'll also leave a link in the description to access that as well. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is just the way that I have set up my folder structure. Do not think that you have to copy this exactly. You don't even have to use my automator workflow if you don't want to. You just wanna create some sort of way that you're going to go through and organize your files. So I've got this folder called 0001 underscore Final Cut Pro tutorial. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to jump into Final Cut Pro and you see that I've got this little window here. That's because I don't have any libraries open at the moment. And so it's asking me, do you want to open one that already exists or do you want to create a new one? So we're gonna click new. And again, if you haven't created any libraries yet in Final Cut Pro, this probably won't show up. You'll probably see an introductory screen or something similar. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop where I created that new folder. And within the root directory of that particular folder, I'm just going to name it exactly what I named that particular folder. So what I'm creating here is a library. Now a library, you can kind of think of as a overarching parent container for all of this stuff for a particular video or series of videos. Now this is actually different. I've evolved what I've done over time in terms of how I organize my projects. What I used to do was just create a single library for like 20 or 30 different videos that I had created. And what I was determining, what I was finding out was that that library, after it contained like five or six projects was getting gigantic and it couldn't fit on my hard drive anymore. So now what I've begun to do is instead, I create a different library for every single project that I'm working on. So that'll make more sense here in a moment. Unfortunately, it gets a little confusing just because a project is something that is contained within a library. But as I mentioned, that'll make more sense here in a moment. Okay, so here we are again in that root directory of the Final Cut Pro tutorial folder that I created earlier. And I'm just going to name my library the same thing that I named the actual folder. And I'm going to save it in the root directory of that folder. So we'll click save. Let's go ahead and pop back over there. And you'll see this is the library. This is the Final Cut Pro library that we are saving here. Now, before you do this step, one of the things that I'm going to recommend is that you specify within the settings. As I mentioned, we're not going to be going through every setting and every preference in all Final Cut Pro. I'm just going to kind of be showing you the ones that have become essential to me as I've been working with Final Cut Pro, largely doing YouTube videos. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to want to do is that under import and your settings may be different and they may be very close to what I have here. But one of the things I like to do prior to working on any new project is making sure that this is set to copy to library storage location. Now, alternatively, what you can do is you can leave files in place. What this is going to do is that every single time we drag a video or audio or image file into this project, it's going to copy it into this particular library. If you were to select leave files in place, what this is going to do is it's not going to copy them to the library. Instead, it's going to reference them where you copied the files from. So for example, if you were to drag a file from your desktop into your project, if you were to drag, let's say your video file from your desktop into your project, then what would happen is if you delete that, that file from your desktop later, it will be missing in your Final Cut Pro, Pro project. So you want to make sure that you select that first. That's going to be really important. And then the other thing that you're going to want to do is this isn't, uh, this is pretty optional, but if you want, you want to go through and select where specific storage locations are for things. So for most things, I want all my media. So that's going to be my audio files. That's going to be my video files. It's going to be anything that's comprised within the project itself. I want it to be saved in the Final Cut Pro library. That's going to be in this collection right here. For motion content, you're probably not going to be using that too often. So you can just save, keep that at the default in motion templates folder. Cache, you probably do want to save that in the library. And then backups, you can just specify a place anywhere on your computer, not necessarily in the library. It wouldn't make much sense. Um, but anywhere on your computer, and it's usually created for you for Final Cut Pro to save any of the backups that it needs. So those are two settings that are going to be important to make sure that you have specified prior to starting to import anything into your new library or project. OK, so now what you're going to see up in the top left hand corner is our library, right? So this is going to contain everything for this particular project. What you'll also notice is this little thing right here that has a date associated with it. This is what is referred to as an event. This essentially is a container. I like to kind of think of this as a folder. So maybe this is our parent folder. This is our big folder that contains everything. And this is a maybe child folder that is contained within that. Now within this, we can create any number of projects. We can import video files. We can import audio files, images, anything that we're going to need to actually create our project. 
And this one is created for you by default, but you can create as many of these as you want. Now, if I'm gonna be creating a pretty simple video, what I typically do is I just use the default event. But if I'm going to be working on a more complex project that has a lot of things in it, maybe I'll do something like this. I'll say new event, I'll say camera one, and then I'll use that event to organize all of the footage from camera one. And then maybe I'll create a second one that says camera two, and maybe I'll mimic what we have going on in this particular folder. Maybe I'll create a separate event for assets. I'll create one for audio and I'll create one for my footage. It's totally up to you. Uh, so, and for me personally, this varies based upon how much content I'm working with, how much footage or how many audio files I'm working with. This is personal preference, what's gonna make it easier for you to organize. But for most cases, particularly if you're wanting to keep it simple, you can feel free just to work with the default event. So what you can do then is right click and then click new project. Now a project is actually going to contain pretty much what you would imagine, the project. So that's where we're going to do our work. That's where we're going to drag in all those audio and video files onto the timeline to start to create our video. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is I personally will name it the same thing, only I will remove the nomenclature. This is typically gonna be named whatever you want this video to be called when it's published. So maybe if you're publishing a YouTube video, you wanna make sure that it's the same. It doesn't have to be, but just for your own sake, you probably wanna make sure that it's similar or the same as the title will appear on YouTube or on Instagram or TikTok. What we can then do is change, if we want to, the particular event in which this project resides. So again, I, as I mentioned, I'm just gonna be using that default one, so no problem there. Starting time code, you're almost always gonna wanna leave that the same. Uh, and then also for the video format, you get to determine here what format of video you're going to be working in. In almost every case, I would recommend that you're going to be working by default in 1080p, particularly if you're going to be working on a video for YouTube. That's gonna change if you're using something like TikTok. If you're doing TikTok, obviously you're going to want your video to be vertical, and then you're going to wanna change this to 1080 by 1920, which is again, 1080p, but a vertical version. Um, so that's going to be important for you to nail down. Most cases, you're gonna just be doing 1080p HD, or if you just so happen to be working with entirely 4K footage, you can also do 4K. Uh, but all these other ones in between, very rare that you're ever going to want to use that for anything. Again, most cases 1080p, other cases 4K. If you're gonna be doing vertical video, you wanna make sure that you change this after the fact to 1080 by 1920. But as I mentioned, 1080p is gonna be the normal. Now the next thing you want to pick out is your frame rate. Now I've heard a lot of different discussions about this. I currently work in 24 frames per second and of course that comes out to 23.98p in terms of the frame rate. What a lot of video cameras actually shoot with and a lot of phones as well as they shoot, they shoot 30 frames per second is kind of the normal. Now this is completely up to you but one of the things that I've noticed with my videos is that when I shoot in 24 frames per second, they have a more cinematic look. They've got a little bit more of that motion blur built into them. And I like that film-esque motion blur type look. Whereas with something that's shot in 30 frames per second, looks a little bit more static, a little bit more digital to me. So you see me waving my hand around right now, that looks a little bit more film-esque to me, to my eye. So it's a stylistic preference. So for most people, I'm gonna recommend you just do 24 frames per second and just default to that. If there's a specific reason that you want to do something at uh, 30 frames per second, you can. If it looks a little bit better to you, then that would be what you want to start with. There are some cases where people like to use 60 frames per second. So maybe if you're capturing something that frames make a big difference in, so maybe it's something that's like a sport that you're watching, or maybe there's a video game that you're capturing and all those frames make a big difference to make the viewership better, that's up to you. But if you're going to be doing face to camera like I'm doing, I'm gonna recommend that you just do 24 frames per second. Next up for rendering, I'd recommend that unless you have a very specific reason, otherwise you wanna make sure that you're working with the standard default Apple ProRes 422. There is a video I'm gonna do in the future where 4444 
uh, or the XQ may come in handy, but again, for most cases, keeping it at this default rendering codec is gonna work just fine. Color space, we'll keep it the standard. And then we're just going to use stereo 48 as well for the audio. Everything looks good, so we're going to click OK. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like when we have created our new project. You'll see over here in the left-hand corner, we are currently looking at the default event that we have created here. And then within it, you'll see that we have up here at the top, our project. And then you'll also be able to see some information off to the right about that project. Now you notice those settings that we were configuring as we were setting up this new project. Uh, you can actually go back and edit those at any time if you want to. You can click on modify and you can go through and change any of those you need to. You can also go in here and just click once if you want to rename your project for any reason. Now the next thing that we would be doing as we're creating and editing our project is we're going to start dragging in footage and audio and elements that we're going to want to add to that project in order to create our video and you're either going to drag them onto the event that also contains our project or into other events if we want to. Okay, so like I mentioned, let's go ahead and get familiar with some of the elements here. So like I mentioned, this space here is going to contain all of the elements that we're going to be working with to create our video. So again, all the video and audio files are gonna go here as well as our project or multiple projects. As you'll be able to see here, you can actually duplicate projects if you ever wanna create, maybe you wanna save some of the versions you're working on. So maybe you make significant changes to your projects and you wanna go through here and save versions as you're working on it. This is actually something I do many times as I am working on videos for a, uh, for a particular client. So maybe that's something that you want to do as well if you wanna try iterations of your project. One of the things you'll notice up here is we've got some different views that you can go through. You can actually set statuses to particular projects or assets that you're working with. You can change the view. This is perhaps how it shows up for you by default, but I actually really prefer this. You can, sh you can view everything easily in this nice list view, and then it's previewed up here in this top box. And then, of course, you can drag these around as well. In here, you also notice that you're able to go through and change some of the appearance settings for each of these items. Again, I usually don't do too much uh, messing with that. I've pretty much left it at the default. The other thing we have as well is a nice little search feature. So if you end up finding yourself swimming in files, tons of audio, you can go through and you can search those relatively easily. Now off to the right, this is gonna be our viewfinder. So this is going to be where we actually, our viewfinder or our canvas, there's a number of different names for it, but this is where the actual video is going to play or showcase. This is our screen, so to speak, our TV screen, you can call it, that is showing up here. It's gonna have the title of our video. It's gonna show us that we're working in 1080p at 24 frames per second in stereo. You're also gonna have some view options here. So if you ever want to zoom out on your project, or if you wanna zoom way in on your project, of course, we don't have a video in here, so it's not gonna show. But for most cases, you're just gonna to, going to wanna to click Fit. We're not really going to be messing with the view too much. If you are working with multiple camera angles, you can show those angles in a separate panel. But again, we'll be touching on that in another video that is actually outside the scope of this getting started video. If you happen to be working with two monitors, which I personally do, you can actually press this button right here to move this preview window to the second monitor. So if you want to save a bunch of space, Obviously, I can't capture both monitors at the same time, but on my second monitor, that whole preview display window is now showing full screen on that entire monitor, and then you can just switch back and forth. This is also going to let you kind of hide some of these elements if you do not need to see them. Uh, this area is always going to be the inspector that showcases all of the options that we have available to us to the current video clip that we have. So if you got something highlighted here in the timeline, it's an audio clip, or even if it's in here that you've selected it within your event, all the options to edit that clip are going to show up here. Then of course, this is this bottom half right here is going to be our timeline. And this is where we're going to add all of our video clips, all of our audio clips. We're going to splice them together. You're gonna to be able to stack them on top of each other. You also have an index here where if you want to, you can actually go through and you can add uh, notes to particular pieces of the video if you'd like to be able to reference those later. And then we've got all of our editing tools for trimming, positioning, range selection, 
tr uh, cutting our clips, zooming in and out on the timeline as a whole, and the hand tool for dragging around if we ever need to. So we're not going to get into the timeline too much just because there's going to we're going to cover that in depth in the next video so not too much to show without a video clip here anyways some of the other things that we've got available to us however is the ability to transform or resize particular elements so if you've got a image and you want that to be smaller you can transform it by going to this transform option you can also crop it so if you got a video file that's just too big or you want to zoom in or punch in you can crop it if you want to distort it so that maybe you make it angled onto a, a building that you can do that color adjustments is essentially what this enables you to do if you want to slow down a clip if you've got something that's shot in like 120 frames per second you can use that one of the other things that we've got here as well and again we'll be touching on this in detail in the next video is a whole bunch of titling as well as generators. So for example, if you wanted to be able to show credits at the end of a film you're working on, you can do that by adding something from this section. If you click on build in and out, you'll see that this is going to be a lot of Final Cut Pro's default titling. So if you wanna show a title at the beginning of your video, you can use one of their presets. Of course, they've got the standard Star Wars text if you ever wanted that for whatever reason, uh, titling. And there's just a ton of them kind of built in. Uh, so we'll be doing some basic titling in the next video. You see, I've got a ton in here because I've purchased a lot of plugins uh, for a little bit more dynamic and unique and more interesting titling. Uh, but again, we'll be touching on that in the future video. For generators, there's a lot of backgrounds that you can use, animations. You see this one of water, there's some of clouds. Um, but we'll be touching uh, on that a little bit more as well. I typically recommend, rather than using the ones built into Final Cut Pro, that you actually go and you purchase a stock version that's a little bit more unique, that works better for your particular project, rather than using something that's built into Final Cut Pro. But these are available to you if you want to experiment with them. And lastly, what you'll notice over here at the right-hand side of the screen is that you've got a lot of video and audio effects. So again, we'll be talking about these in detail, but I just want to show you where they are. So things uh, from color grading all the way to blurs uh, and beyond the video and audio effects, we also have transitions. So if you want to cross dissolve from one scene to another, or you want to swipe or blur from one scene or video to another, those are all built in the Final Cut Pro. Again, ones we'll be talking about in the next video. And as we're getting used to the interface, the last, last thing we'll probably touch on is this button at the top right hand corner, which will be our share button. Usually when you're working on a project that actually has footage, you'll be able to see in the top right hand corner that this has a nice little drop down for you to be able to export your project in a variety of different formats. So this is actually something we're gonna be touching on in the final video. But again, the goal here was just to get you familiar with the interface where different things show up so that you can have that tool, those tools at the ready once we actually start editing our video in the next video in the series. Okay, so that's it. The goal of this video was just to give you a little bit of that bird's eye view of Final Cut Pro so you can get a good idea of where things appear, where they show up, throughout the interface within Final Cut Pro. Now in the next video, we're actually going to start building our sample project. We're gonna throw in some video clips, some audio clips. We're gonna splice some things together, get that audio synced up, even multiple camera angles so that you can kind of start to get a better feel for how you can create your first project with Final Cut Pro. So if you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to make sure that you never miss any of our videos, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.